Good morning everyone. My name is Cliff Austin. Welcome to another video painting session. This is number five of the video painting of the 30 day challenge. Create 30 challenge promoted by Elaine Picard. Um, I teach a little bit in Littleton, Colorado and Park Hill in Denver and at Curtis Center in Greenwood Village. I teach mainly oil paintings, pastels, watercolor, gouache and also some basic drawing and figure sketching. If you're interested in classes, please look at my webpage, cliffaustin.com. Also check out the Curtis Arts Center in Greenwood Village for coming classes and workshops. <clears throat> you can also look at some of my artwork that's available through Mary Williams Fine Arts in Boulder, Colorado, Studio 8369 in Grand Lake, Colorado, and Creative Framing Art Gallery in Louisville, Colorado. So please comment on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. Today we're going to paint this kind of mountainous scene. I like it because of the dark sky, the light landscape, and the, uh, the simple shapes. It also has a virtual natural compositional element that I'm going to try and take advantage of. I've broken the painting the picture, the photograph, into thirds so that I can copy it, uh, transfer it to the canvas. The canvas I'm working on is a 9 by 12. It's an old painting that was very unsuccessful. It's been sitting around my studio for a long time, so I thought I'd recycle and reuse. I did a basic sketch um, to try and get a handle on where these pieces and parts are going to go. I also did a preliminary drawing on the canvas because there are so many little parts and pieces, or pieces and parts if you will, that uh, need to be in the right place and the right value, that this would take a longer amount of time, and since I only allocate about 20 or 30 minutes per sketch and painting, and then I finish off camera, um, I don't want to take too much time getting it started, so I've done a little bit of preliminary work up front. We'll start with uh, getting some of that information transferred from the photograph to the canvas. And I really like the darkness of the sky. And then we have these Interesting shapes. Very, very interesting shapes. This tree line, it's got lots of lumps and bumps and lots of character to it. And so much of this drawing is going this direction, and then the tree shapes are going the opposite direction. I thought that was pretty interesting. And the way it curls back here and kind of points you back in that direction, I thought that was kind of cool. And I don't want to create a uh, totally across the piece, across the panel shape, because that would kind of make this dark shape a barrier between the foreground, midground, background, and sky. So I'm going to leave that open. I'm just going to roughly put these idea outlines in there. My printer started to get started to lose some of its toner, and so that's why we're getting these really strange little purples in there. But that intrigued me as well. I thought that's pretty cool. I wonder if I could do something with that. And here we've got some of the lesser shapes. And I like that rounding feeling there. That's kind of cool. Keeps me from falling off the canvas. 
And this crevasse, I guess it's called, is right in the center, pretty close to the center. I'm going to move that off center, just because I think that looks more interesting. So I'm going to try and get this flavor of the composition going. Lots of lights and darks. These shadows are going to be really important. These guys right in here, so I'm just going to make a quick note as to where they might be. Just so that I don't lose my place. So they're like page markers in a sense, right? And these colors are going to be a unifying shape and temperature and value and color. They're going to be similar to start off with. Yeah, something like that. Now I can go in and start dealing with this dark shape. Remember, I start with dark shapes first. Oil painters generally start with darks, go to medium values, and then to light values. Not always. Just the opposite of what a watercolor person would work, artist would work with. Watercolors, you want to save your lights at all cost. So you start with your lightest values, and usually from background to foreground, and then you go to your dark values. But in pastels and in oils, it's just the opposite. You lay your darks in first, and then you build to your medium values, and then you put the sparkle with your lightest values in last. Not always, but generally speaking. So I use ultramarine, sap green, Add yellow to get a particular gray green. Then I bring it down with a little bit of cad orange to give it that military drab color. And you can modify that by adding more blue to make it darker and cooler, obviously. Add yellow to lighten it and brighten the green just a little bit. Some interesting combinations can be had with ivory black and cad yellow. That makes a really nice combination of color greens. Many people are afraid to use green, but I found that it is one of the most flexible colors. And I say flexible because you can have a blue green or a red green, orange green, purple green, yellow green, blue green. The, the possibilities were just amazing. I think what happens is we try and get those greens to chroma too chromatic, too bright. And we can make a green look really, really bright by putting something next to it, like a dull color. And a dull red next to a bright green will just make it scream. And that's just basic color theory. Next I'm going to work on this shadow stuff. So we've got some shadow stuffies going on here. And 
wanted to be cool. I'm going to punch in some purples here in a minute, just as soon as I get a good feeling of where my shapes are. I'm going to use this blue and bring it down here as well, so we get some continuity, that would be a good word, some interactivity, so it's not isolated, isolating a color here and isolating a color there. That's pretty cool. And then we have this shape right in here. over here. It's a little bit darker in place, isn't it? I don't have to do that. So I'm making my brush work predominantly go with the shapes. So with the trees, they were up and down. And with this uh, horizontal plane, the ground plane, I'm trying to go a little bit more horizontal or in the angle of the slope of that mountain. So now I'm going to start playing with a little bit of color in there. I'm going to take a little bit of purple and just squeeze it in there just for grins and giggles. Not everywhere, but just in places. Now the purple probably came about when my printer stopped uh, functioning properly <laughs> when it ran out of ink, that's what I'm trying to say. Something like that. That looks pretty nice, huh? Now, there are some kind of um, warm shadows warm earth shadow colors right into here. These guys. I'm going to push the color on that just a little bit. Make that a little bit warmer than maybe it ought to be just to see. Of course I can always kick it down later, but for now that kind of looks interesting. Interesting. Oh, that's kind of this color here, isn't it? It's kind of like in here. In order to cover that surface, I'm going to go to a little bit bigger brush and just wash in those colors. Because it's all about relationships. And that's got to be a lot lighter. And even some of this can be a lot lighter. I'm going to hit that with real heavy paint. But I want to get an idea where my shapes are. I'm using yellow ochre, just a touch of cad red. Yeah, something like that. Now, the last big shape, in order to give me these values, is that sky. And that sky is pretty dark. Darker than you think. So I'm going to use a lot of paint. Ultramarine. And trusty liquid so that it dries fast. I'm going to make it darker than normal. Oh yeah. So by making it darker, that's going to help the light values really pop out. Darker, darker, darker. Of course, if I make it too dark, I can always bring it back up. Let's 
fun about oil painting, or most painting, watercolors, acrylics, is the, it's a technique called glazing. And you can let it dry and change a value, change a color. Too. I could probably go a lot darker, couldn't I? Yep, I think I will. What fun. Okay, and that gives you the idea. We're going to make that darker. Just make that darker still. Help some of those shapes. Get into those lights. Oh, the fun part, the magic. Huh? So we're going to take a lot of white, add our liquid to get it to the consistency that we like. Nice, soft, buttery paint. And a little bit of yellow ochre. A little bit of cat orange. Let's see if that gets us to where we want to be. Is pretty bright. What would that look like? Mm, too light. Let's bring that down a little bit more. A little orange, a little red. Right there. It's a little pink, huh? That could be alright. Let's get that in there like that. Something like that to get us started with. lights in.
we're almost to the point where we can just start getting to the fun part, huh? Putting in some of the more important information that helps us that helps us decide how far we want to take this painting. Look at that. What a great start. At this point, I've shown you how to put the larger shapes in there, and I'll finish this off camera, post it on Facebook and uh, Instagram, and the finished video will go on to YouTube, and I hope you have a great day. So please leave a comment on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. Um, please give a shout out to Mary Williams Fine Art and the Curtis Art Center. and. Have a great, great weekend.